being three o'clock, <coughs> let's call the January 19th meeting of the Laconia Police Commission to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Supporting Secretary Jeffrey Sawicki, present we have Commission Chairman Doug Whittem. And thankfully, Commissioner Mayhew is back joining us, and Commissioner Thomas also. <sighs> Uh, the staff present, we have uh, Chief Chris Adams, Captain Matthew J. Canfield, Lieutenant Richard Simmons, Lieutenant Al Grayton, Lieutenant Thomas Sweat, and Prosecutor James Sawyer. A uh, quorum has been established as there are three commission members present, so let's move on with the agenda. Uh, personal matters, commendations, and awards. I guess we would have one. First of all, I'd like to welcome Commissioner Mayhew back. We missed him. Obviously, he's undergone some medical treatment, so it's super, super special to have the commissioner back with us. It's not the same without him. On, on that same vein, it's also his birthday today. I won't divulge his age, but we'd love to present him with a card. As most of you know, the commissioner his birthday cards to all of our employees. Thank you very much. On their birthday, and he's been doing that for forever, years. actually, for probably 20 something years. 21 years. And he never misses our birthday, so we'd like to recognize him on his special day. Maybe at the end we can cut into this and do it then, but happy Thank birthday, Commissioner, on behalf yeah. of all of the members of the department. The we secret appreciate number is 87. I wasn't going to divulge your age, but yeah, you're doing great for 87, and we are truly appreciative of everything you do for this community and for the police department. You you really are a champion for all of us, so thank, thank you, you and happy much. birthday. Well said. Training of the chair recognizes recognize Lieutenant Graydon. Last <laughs> month, uh, all the officers were recertified in their tasers, and this month we're working on first aid and CPR recertifications for all the officers as well. Laconia Links, Chief Adams. I think there's two items. This is a picture of a group of us who were shopping at Walmart, and that's for the Christmas delivery that we did on <laughs> Christmas Eve. And this is the graduation of our two newest officers, Officer Goodhart and Officer Wallach, at Police Standards and Training. And I think that was all for the links. Okay. Resignations and retirement. We have one, as you see up on the screen. Sheriff Michael Moyer officially resigned from his evidence position, and obviously he's been with the agency for well over 30 years, I believe. But he's not going far, just up the street as the sheriff of Belknap County, which is great. So we're looking forward to a great work and relationship between those two agencies. Hiring, so Lieutenant Grayton. We are moving forward. Uh, planned start date for new officers will be February 6th. Um, as of right now, it appears we're only going to be hiring two officers. We had one officer that pretty sure I'll know for, for positive this afternoon that has backed out of the process. How many <laughs> vacancies do we actually have, Lieutenant? Three. Three? Yeah. And we have two high noon. No, good. Lieutenant, was that, was that one, the, the certified? Yes. Person that's backing out, apparently backing out. Yes. Well, at least it's not one of the recent graduates from the academy. Correct. No. <laughs> they're they're slated so to actually. That, I guess. They're slated to go out on their own on February sixth, I believe. Uh, so we'll be having a FTO board for them. And good. Uh, promotions and reorganization. Nothing there. Nothing there. Division Bureau Commanders Forum. Uh, Captain Canfield. Uh, we continue to work on the active shooter stuff. We'll be doing a, uh, what they call it a board game that Homeland Security will be doing for our supervisors on January 27th. Um, that'll be in the morning related to command and control of uh, major incidents. Um, as part of that, we're going to be following up with a tabletop exercise drill working in collaboration with the school system. 
Um, that tabletop will involve several other departments, the fire department, the school department, um, and it's going to take place at Woodland Heights uh, Elementary School on March 24th. Um, and we're also working with the Department of Homeland Security to come up with a full-scale exercise um, sometime in the time frame of August or September, um, which will be involving a lot of different agencies. Um, all working towards that active shooter preparation and command and control and everything. Um, in addition, we continue to do the active shooter presentations for c civilian groups. Um, we'll be doing several more of those over the next month. Um, the sled dogs are February 10th, 11th, and 12th. Um, weather dependent, we'll be assisting a little bit with those um, as well as the CERT team. Um, and lastly, the school department is uh, reactivated their emergency planning group, which was very big, probably about a year ago, consisted of police, fire, and the principals of all the schools and the SAU um, talking about emergency preparations and, and whatnot on a regular uh, basis. So that's been reinitiated as well, and we'll be working closely with them. Sled Dog Scam, are they planning on Staten and Middle Peachy or on Main Street? Uh, Across from the old prison on the old North Main Street. Oh, that's where the siding line? Yeah, no, that no. big field. Good. Support Division, Lieutenant Grayton. <coughs> we recently had uh, Liberty Utilities came in and did a, uh, a site survey of the PD to see if there's anything that we can do for cost savings. The only thing that they've come up with so far is, besides you know, our boiler and everything, is fairly new. We'll be replacing all of the uh, aerators and all the faucets and all the shower heads to help save some hot water costs there. And they suggested, and I passed along to Kevin Dunleavy at Parks and Recs, as far as a building inspection itself. The inspector noticed when he was there that there were spots on the roof when there was snow that was fairly melted. So he sounds like we're getting a lot of uh, heat loss up through the roof. So that's something that they may look at having that inspection done as well. Um, Fleet, fleet seems to be in fairly good order, and the building other than that is fine, and just working towards filling the positions that we have vacant. Questions? Operations Division, Lieutenant uh, Simmons. <coughs> Excuse me. The Chief will talk about stats more, um, but I, I just want to touch on a couple of things. The uh, calls for service are basically the same. There was a, a very slight decrease, um, but crimes investigated and crimes cleared by arrest are up. Uh, I attribute that to, you know, self-initiated activity by the officers. They're, they're out of their cars, out looking for stuff. Um, the rise in criminal trespass stuff has, has come up here a couple of times. So I looked into that. Uh, some of those calls are coming from uh, landlords and stuff calling that people had no trespass orders and are there. And uh, some of the other uh, ones are generated by officers just being aware of uh, places where those issues are taking place and, and they know you know who's not supposed to be there and in their patrols like I said they're out of the cars and checking those areas and, and they're locating those people in some of those areas so I think the guys have been doing good work getting out of their cars uh, the motor vehicle enforcement is down I think a, a lot of that's attributed to some of the other work that they've been doing they've been generating search warrants and uh, working on that stuff um, but the motor vehicle enforcement is really to try and keep accidents down, and, and those numbers are also down. So I'm, I'm not overly concerned that some of the traffic enforcement is down, but that's something I'll definitely keep looking at. Sure. Questions? Uh, Detective Division? Then it's what? The captain touched on one of the grants we're working on, which is with Homeland Security. Uh, we've gotten some statistical data back on the uh, highway safety grants from last year, and it seems like we did a a good job we met our goals and, and made a difference um, also we're using granite hammer we're putting on a lot more uh, patrols over the, the next few months um, quality of life and investigative what was our share of that grant uh, lieutenant you know, the granite hammer uh, state over seventy six thousand nine hundred and fifty six dollars that was primarily for overtime strictly for overtime that's it that's overtime. all the authorized there any more leads on the two bank robbers or yes I mean you know who they are <laughs> but I mean if we get any idea when we might I think the circle is closing in on them <laughs> the legal division prosecutor Sawyer 
just touch on what uh, Lieutenant Simmons said about the criminal trespasses. Uh, there's a variety. The landlords, some of the landlords, are very uh, good about issuing notices. Um, and one particular landlord, they do it whenever they have a problem. They'll issue a notice to a person they don't want on their property, and that results in a lot of uh, arrests because they're also vigilant about calling the police when they see them on their property. Another, just I think it's circumstances on Guilford Ave there was a house that was had a fire and it was condemned and there's at least a half dozen arrests out of that one unit alone um, over the last it's like around December I'm guessing yeah. so I just saw them at, uh, a bunch of them at the arraignment last uh, last week um, Lieutenant Sweat's working on uh, getting an intern from UNH Law Center which will be good nice help uh, we have to just send down my resume. He's made contact with Lieutenant, former Lieutenant McClellan, uh, who used to work here. Clinton. Clinton? <laughs> both, both. How soon we forget. <laughs> uh, and that's, that's all I have. Just a question, uh, Jim and, and Rich, also. On, on these criminal trespasses, when, you, when a landlord calls a PD, I'm an unwanted person on the property. The policy to that you show up on the scene to direct someone to leave, or and if they don't leave, you charge them with criminal trespassing. Is that a yeah? We'll we'll go anytime they call. Um, typically, what happens is we we're present when the landlord will explain to them that they're not allowed to be on the property, and then we can document that. So if they return, um, then then we can arrest them for criminal trespass. And like you say, if they refuse to leave while we're there, then then obviously we could arrest them then. I just touch on that too. I think it, I think the officers do a good job. Officers and supervisors do a good job in identifying who are trespassers and who are tenants, yeah. because we will not ask a tenant to leave their home. So the officer does a little bit of investigation to determine whether or not there's some landlord. It's, is it a landlord tenant issue or is it a criminal issue? If it's a landlord tenant issue, we will not get involved. They have to go through the the, uh, the court process to legally have them removed. So again, the officers I think do a, a, a very good job because I see very few if cases where that's the defense well I was a tenant here that's I'm not trespassing is there a limit is there a uh, I don't know if I, well, the proper term would be but at some point if you see the same people over and over again trespassing at different locations throughout the city is there a point where you know you even though they might be you know, they might comply and, and leave is there a point where you keep seeing the same people over and over again where you would rest them the first time around no, I think we'd always give them the, the option yeah. to, to leave. Um, but, the, you know, you bring that up. When I was reviewing some of the criminal trespass case, there are several of them with, with the same person yes. or same people. Yeah. Um, and that's something, once they do get arrested, that's something that, you know, we make sure that Jim knows about to <coughs> address that in court. Thanks. Orders and bulletins, uh, Lieutenant Greiton. Any questions? Um, yeah, hold on a second here, Rich. Uh, Tenant, on the, um, and the, Chief, you can comment on this too, or anybody. I'm just, uh, the, the training for the uh, Officer Adams um, <clears throat> on the um, Certified Recovery Support Worker Training. I was just wondering if you could comment on how that, uh, I know this uh, collaboration is one of the big uh, components of that training he's going to attend uh, later in the month. But I was wondering how the arrangement with the Laconia Fire Department and their designated person has been working out. If you have any general comments about it. Well, as you know, that program is just getting started. Yeah. I think it's been around now for maybe a month or something like that. Brian over there is basically it's the same concept, which is good, structured after ours. And I think it gives Eric a little more support it's going to be spreading I think the case load out a little more when Brian's working and Eric's not working it's going to add to coverage and availability of these two guys to, to help out so I was very pleased to hear that the fire department adopted that program obviously we've heard a lot about the safe stations which is which is a little bit different I don't think it's as much as a wraparound as our programs are and that constant um, oversight that Eric and Brian will give to clients and their families so very pleased I've heard it 
everything that I've heard is positive with his new position over at the fire department. And Eric is very happy to be working alongside him and kind of, like I said, spreading the clients out because, as you know, Eric has been inundated with calls for help from family and patients alike. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Commission action. <coughs> Acceptance of the December 15th, uh, 2016 minutes. The secretary's draft of the minutes was sent to you and a copy is in your meeting packet. Please let me know if there are any errors. Are there any corrections to the minutes as distributed? If there are no corrections, the minutes stand uh, accepted as distributed. Review of monthly activity reports. Chief Adams, Department Monthly Highlights. Just waiting to get to that. Can you, just, can you go down to the next page there? Thanks. So in December, we had 35 domestic disturbances, 70 general disturbances, and nine suicidal subjects. Laconia Police Department employees volunteered 56 hours, and the Victim Service Unit 15 three-quarters hours. So. And we'll, I'll touch under my report the year-end statistics. We'll go through all of those and kind of see what the trends are and where we ended up for, for the year. Speaking of uh, support, I thought I pretty much had Peggy Shelley convinced that she should come in to volunteer. Did she ever show up? To she did, yes. And I believe that process is starting, so. Good. Yes. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Monthly fleet report, Lieutenant Green. Any questions? Criminal investigative unit statistics, Lieutenant Sweat. Unless you have any questions, I'm all set. Thank you. Monthly patrol division statistics, Chief Adams. We'll go over those during my report, if that's okay. okay. What'd you print out, Captain Canfield? Uh, uh, any questions? The only one I had is we discussed around the, the overtime. It's got to be down some issue. Yes, down. The training? The, the overtime account and how that gets reimbursed. It's showing zeros in there. I'm sorry, what, what are you asking? About the overtime. <coughs> Those were showing a, a yeah, zero, zero balance in there. This this is the one that's com that's generated from our our computer systems. That's not 100 percent accurate. The one from City Hall is more accurate. I don't know why it's showing zero. Um, it, it that's not accurate. I don't know, but I'll, I'll look into that. It's a big uh, big item, so I just wondered what. Yeah, my guess is that it's it's. It's reimbursables, so a lot of the grants, the the step patrols, a lot of the the granite hammer ones. So you pay for the stuff out of overtime a lot. It it gets paid for out of overtime, but it gets reimbursed from the grants. So my guess is that hasn't caught up with the reimbursements yet. Yeah. Whereas the actual the other budget printout would show that. Captain, I'll, I'll I, double I, check that with you. I also think City Hall uses a, a separate category to keep that off of the over. At City Hall, they keep that off the our overtime line. Yeah, but it's not showing it on that one. Right. I'll, I'll, I'll research that and I'll get you an answer on it. Monthly traffic statistics. Traffic collisions for the month of December, there was 53 with four with injuries, zero fatalities. As you know, we had fortunately had a fatality on the bypass last week, an elderly woman, but Injuries are down compared to 2015 at the same time frame and in November as well. So always remind the motorists, obviously, in inclement weather, fog, snow, rain, just to use extra caution. Correspondence to and from the department. I think the first one is from Lakes Region Children's Auction, and that was awarding us the $10,000 from the Children's Auction. Obviously, we're very appreciative of that money, and we use it throughout the year, helping out needy families and children, and then at the end of the year, shopping for Christmas presents. Thank you for Social Issues Days. I think we talked about that. Lieutenant Simmons and myself spoke with them. 
their experiences for ride-alongs. There was a thank you card to Lieutenant Simmons from somebody who attended the Citizens Police Academy. Thank you letters, two thank you letters from New Market Police Department. One was addressed to Lieutenant Sweat, the other to Sheriff Moya for their assistance during recent oral boards. So they're very appreciative of that. Thank you from the Davenport family, just thanking us in general. Thank you from former police captain, Captain White, thanking Deb for all she does in the police department as well. Uh, thank you card from Mike Finogel's wife's family for recent death that they had and the support the police department showed. And I think the last one was a thank you from Meredith Interlake School District for hosting one of their students for an internship here. I think that was it. And the chief's report. Performance cards, I think there was nine, and they were all A's, if my memory serves me correct. I have the commission's attendance report, and I think everybody was here for all of the meetings, with the exception of Commissioner Mayhew that missed one for medical reasons. So, nice job. Do we have to do anything formal with that or no? So thank you for your dedication and service. Coffee with a cop, I just had one over at 25 Union Avenue a couple of days ago. We had about 24 people attend, employees and residents, and we're there for over an hour. Great conversation, great questions. It'll be in the, this week's links. And also Martin Luther King Day celebration over at the middle school that was on Sunday. Myself, the captain, Captain, Canfield, I think Officer Short were there. It was about a three and a half hour event, and they had a panel discussion on what it is like to be Muslim in New Hampshire. So they had about 40 people there, maybe 30, 40 people there. Some great questions were asked, and uh, overall, it was a great evening. Moving on to the crime stats, I just want to touch base year in crime stats. For crimes against person for the year overall, we were down 5%, 631 compared to 666 in 2015, which obviously is good. I just wanted to highlight a couple of areas. Aggravated assaults, which is felony level assaults, we were up 37% in that category, which is troubling. We had 63 aggravated assaults in 2016 compared to 46 in 2015. I think a lot of those are directly related to the, the, the drug scene that we're seeing and to alcohol and things like that. So simple assaults, misdemeanor levels were down 7%. We had 389 in 2016 compared to 420 the year before. Criminal threatening cases were down by 18%, 111 compared to 135. Crimes against property. Overall, there was an increase of 6% in this category, 1,205 compared to 1,000. 132 the year before. There was a 129% increase in robberies. We had 16 compared to 7. Is in the robbery category, does that include unarmed and armed robbery both? That's both. Okay. That's both. So use of force during the commission of a crime. So that's both. So these all were not armed robberies, but there was some level of robbery. For burglaries, we're down 6%. We had 73 compared to 78. Shoplifting, we were down 25%, 156 compared to 208. Counterfeit forgery, we're up 122%, 51 compared to 23. If you remember, we had quite a few of the counterfeit money around. I know we had quite a, quite a lot of those this or last year. Shoplifting, Chief. I know we had quite a spike there when, when uh, Walmart put their entrance in Laconia rather than Guilford. Has that that's quieted down apparently or a little bit for several reasons. A little bit. A yeah. lot but a lot really pertains to the loss prevention officers. They're the, a lot of the times the ones that call us and, and find that kind of stuff. So depending on um, what they do, you know, it is 
really changes the amount of calls that we get over there. Crimes against society was a 7% increase, 263 compared to 245. Drug arrests, we had 230, so it was an 8% increase, 230 compared to 212. Weapon law violations, we had 25 compared to 15 the year before, which was a 67% increase. There's no doubt that there's more and more weapons involved, more weapon-related calls, whether it's day shift, midnight shift, 4 to 12, you're hearing a lot of calls, subjects potentially armed with knives, guns, and things like that. So that's something that's concerning to us, and once again, I think related to the drug trade. And the final group is Group B crimes, 3% increase, 1,130 compared to 1,100. Driving under the influence was down 33%. We had 58 arrests compared to 87 the year before. Intoxes were down 8%, 275 compared to 299. And trespass it was up 62%, 152 compared to 94, and Lieutenant Simmons kind of touched on that earlier. So so overall, not terrible. I think, you know, there are some slight decreases and slight, some slight increases, but no huge dramatic increases. Our overdose numbers, I think we were at around 80 for 2016 with five suspected deaths. Is that correct? That's correct. And where are we? For, well, we're just starting to. We're just starting, yeah. yeah. Uh, any questions on any of those numbers? Or? On the uh, driving under the influence, that's down. Now, what do you attribute that to? Uh, uh, police stopping cars or just people well, not drinking? <laughs> I always like to think it's people being wiser, but it's so dependent on officers. When we had Sergeant Finogle, when he was a patrol officer, and I've said this before, you know, he'd go out there and make 60 DWI arrests in one year. So when you have somebody like that, it really increases those numbers. So I think it's probably a little bit of both. Okay. Commissioner Tarr, do you have a uh, just, question? Uh, uh, it's just a really broad question, Chief. Uh, just how would you rate the state of the city, I guess, in terms of crime and safety, if you could make some kind of <coughs> statement about the statistics and your experience with the department sure. and where we are now. I mean, I think it would be naive to say that Laconia doesn't have certain issues with whether it's substance misuse that leads to criminal activity. I think when you look at it per capita, yes, we are slightly higher than other communities. However, Laconia still is a very safe community when it comes to random criminal activity and especially violent crime. If we look at our homicide rate or stranger on stranger crime, you know, your chances of being mugged or robbed at gunpoint or knife point are slight. I'm not saying it can't happen because it does, but a lot of our criminal activity is directly or indirectly related to substance misuse, whether alcohol or, or, or drugs. So I think overall, it's a safe community. The state of New Hampshire is one of the safest states in our nation, so we can't lose sight of that. You know, we get caught up into bad news and, and reporting, you know, criminal activity and things like that, but there's a lot of good stuff that's happening as well, and of course we're taking you know, a proactive step in addressing our issues that we have here, both with enforcement and other initiatives. Thank you very much. Good, good summary. Thanks. All business. Thanks. New business. Hearing nothing, moving on to confirming the date of the next regular special meeting. February 16th. February 16th, 2017. Other business. Hearing nothing. Uh, citizen comments. No citizen comments. There's no need for non public. No, there isn't. So I take a motion. No to need for non public. You want to say something? No, I just had a question before we Go ahead. do that. Do we, do we have to approve the audit? There's a couple of out of state training requests in here. We do. The, you approved out of state training requests last month. We did. Yeah. So those were just the yeah. orders 
for okay. them to go to that training. Okay. So they, they got notice that they're going to the training. Have you, uh, do we have a new DARE officer yet or not? No, not yet. Okay. Do you have any um, interested in it? W we do. Um, so that that's something that we still got to talk about yeah. and pick somebody, okay. but we do have that, some Well, that, that won't come up until, what, October they start or September? Yeah, um, we are looking at trying to do the middle school program again. Um, yeah. Michelle's still technically our DARE officer, and, and she's still looking into maybe doing a, a program again like we've yeah. done before in the middle school, which would be real short. That's only a few weeks. Um, I haven't heard back from her whether or not we're going to be able to do that, but it is something that she's working on. And we are still going to do the police academy, C yeah, citizens police academy. Absolutely. Yes. Okay, I've been, I've got a few clients for the head already. <laughs> uh, if there's nothing else to come up, I'll move we adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Consider it done. Good. Have some cake. Yeah, we can set up this one. Uh, it's right here. Uh, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> See, we get the printers. We set off the fire alarms in the